Hi, this is Utrecht Correction, Germanos Brilakis, and this is case 176 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating the importance of doing everything in moderation. The patient presented with non-ST elevation of myocardial infarction and was found to have a severe cardiomyopathy with an ejection fraction of 16% and viability in most territories except for the circumflex territory. Diagnostic angiography demonstrated uh, essentially three CTOs. There is a CTO of the middle AD. There is a CTO of the circumflex, actually the first obtuse marginal branch. And there is also a CTO on the ostium of the right coronary artery with the distal vessel filling mainly via a conus branch. After a lot of discussion and after the patient was turned down for coronary bypass graft surgery, he was referred for complex percutaneous coronary intervention. We decided to use hemodynamic support given extensive coronary artery disease and very low ejection fraction. This is the dual injection, showing the CTO of the LAD, CTO of the circumflex, and CTO of the right coronary artery. We decided to start with the LAD because it appeared quite favorable. It did have uh, a cap next to a diagonal, but the occlusion length was short and there was good distal landing zone. We decided to start with undergrade wire escalation followed by ADR and actually just using a workhorse wire through a Corsair microcatheter, very easily crossed uh, in the LAD into the distal vessel. We did intravascular ultrasound that demonstrated some diffuse disease and some calcification. We predilated and then we placed uh, drug eluting stents and this provided a nice result standing essentially all the way proximal to the takeoff of the diagonal branch. We perform intravascular ultrasound showing good stand expansion, good stand strut apposition. And this was the final result on the LAD. Again, excellent result, which was achieved very quickly through undergrade wire escalation. We then decided to treat the circumflex. Even though there was no viability in this territory, it was supplying good collaterals to the right coronary artery territory. And it was much more straightforward to do than the right coronary artery. It had a tapered proximal cap, length of about 20 millimeters at a good distal landing zone. Uh, once again, we were able to advance uh, a gladius mongo from proximal true to distal true lumen and uh, predilated, placed uh, a drag eluting stand and that uh, successfully recanalized the distal portion of the obtuse marginal followed by another drag eluting stand from the obtuse marginal to the proximal circumflex and that once again provided a nice result both in geographically as well as by intravascular ultrasound. So here we are, we've now successfully recanalized the LAD and the circumflex. And the question was whether we should stop or whether we should go with the right coronary artery. We did discuss about this. The reasons to continue are that we had used relatively low dose of radiation and contrast. And we also had in the impellar device that could provide support in case of hemodynamic compromise. The downside of going forward, of course, is that if something were to happen, we're already starting with some contrast and radiation being administered. The decision was to actually attempt the right coronary artery CTO. This actually was a harder CTO. It did have an ambiguous proximal cap. It was a long CTO. The distal vessel was filling through an epicardial collateral, this conus branch. And the distal vessel was of good quality. Our plan was to try undergrade first. If it doesn't work, go retrograde through septals, although we did not have a continuous connection. If it didn't work, do undergrade wiring. And then if it didn't work, do undergrade dissection and re-entry. So here is an injection through an undergrade Corsair microcatheter. We do have a small branch coming off at the proximal cap. These are the septals, not the best. We do have a recently placed stent into the LAD. 
And we did surfing of the septal branches using Xeon Black, Filter XTR, SUO3. But unfortunately, we could not cross. We did an injection through the microcatheter, and there was no continuous connection between the septal branch and the posterior descending artery. We had some uh, difficulty getting an amplatz guide to the right coronary artery. The guide was kinked, but it was replaced. And uh, here we're now having an amplatz that is engaging the right coronary artery and a separate guide to actually um, opacify this conus branch that was filling the distal vessel. So dual injection within the same, essentially, um, artery. We tried to puncture the proximal cap with a Gaia Next 1 wire. We used the Mongo and we seemed to go along the vessel architecture. Although the wire was not moving very clearly, although it turns out that the wire entered into an acute marginal branch. We did use a dual loom microcatheter to try to advance the uh, guide wire more towards the right coronary artery, and that seemed to move in a different plane. But uh, despite all that, and despite using the knuckle wiring, we were unable to go further. And actually, retrospectively, when we observed it, the knuckle size was relatively large, which uh, should have raised a, a red flag. We tried again to advance um, a caravel and a microcatheter through the conus branch for a potential retrograde crossing, but uh, it was too tortuous, and we were actually unable to cross this epicardial to go into the distal trulumen. And the great attempts were unsuccessful, but then with contrast ejection, now we have a problem. We do have a perforation in the mid-right coronary artery. What to do? This is the algorithm for treating a perforation. The first step is obviously to inflate a balloon to stop bleeding into the pericardium, give fluids, and then uh, potentially, if there is tamponade, perform pericardiocentesis, call the surgeon in case surgery is needed, although this is rarely the case. And then if there is persistent extravasation, treat the cause for large vessel perforation. Typically, cover stents or sometimes prolonged balloon inflations can do it. However, in this situation, we have an occluded vessel, a CTO vessel, and this is the one scenario in which coils can be used for large vessel perforation to seal it. So here is the balloon inflated, stopping bleeding into the pericardium. Despite waiting for several minutes, they're still bleeding into the pericardium. An echocardiogram was done, shows a small pericardial effusion. So clearly, we have not succeeded in sealing it, and we have to do something more. And the next step is to deploy coils. We had a keratal microcatheter that was delivered to the mid-right coronary artery. This is the block and deliver technique. Balloon is inflated deflated shortly to advance the microcatheter, and then it's reinflated to prevent bleeding into the pericardium. We delivered two 2.5 by 4 axiom coils into the mid-right coronary artery. Again, these are uh, smaller coils. Typically, those coils are used for mold vessel perforation. Um, this is the first coil, and this is deployment of the second coil, just proximal to the site of the perforation. But uh, unfortunately, the perforation was not sealed. So clearly, we needed something more. So we actually had our interventional radiologist come up, and he brought a larger coil. This is a 6 by 20, so really a large coil that um, is um, detachable. So if we don't like the location, we can retrieve it. And actually, we tried to deploy it, but it was too long. So we decided to take it out and then came in with um, um, another one, a four, this is a 4.0 by 15 centimeter rupee coil, and that was uh, packed tightly into the right coronary artery. Now, we eventually achieved hemostasis, there's no bleeding into the pericardium. Uh, we did have a little bit uh, of uh, the coil coming back after release. But uh, the good news are that the collateral, that conus branch feeding the PDA, actually remained patent throughout the procedure. Echo at the end of the case showed that there was a small pericardial effusion, but once we gave echo contrast definity, there were no bubbles coming into the pericardial space, suggesting that there was no active uh, pericardial bleeding. 
and this was the final result. The patient was stable throughout the procedure. Again, the coil, I wish we had packed it a little more tight so it doesn't protrude back into the proximal right coronary as it is doing here. Uh, echo, that was done one day later, so the small effusion was stable. The patient did have some chest discomfort, suggestive of pericarditis, but uh, he did improve and he was discharged two days later on colchicine as well as ibuprofen. So multiple lessons from this case. The first one is about moderation. Of course, it's easy to speak retroactively, but uh, of course, we now wished we had stopped after recanalizing the left anterior descending artery and the circumflex. We actually do know from a previous paper from Progress CTO that doing multiple CTOs into the during the same procedure has good success, but there is an increased risk of complications, and this is exactly what we saw in this particular case. So retrospectively, when there are multiple CTOs, it may be best to actually stage the procedures to minimize the risk associated with the procedure. Second lesson is about uh, proximal cap and risk of perforation. Uh, in this case, um, we try to use uh, knuckle wire to stay in the vessel architecture and use the risk of perforating. Despite that, we did have a significant perforation. This was a large vessel perforation, but we did not have wire into the distal lumen. And in cases like this, a cover stand will not work because we simply do not have access to the vessel distally. So one way to seal those is to deliver coils. And because the vessel is large, we had to use larger coils, such as the Ruby coil that was brought through interventional radiology. And this is a good collaboration to have when there are challenging situations and we need to deploy some equipment that we don't always have in the cath lab. Asking for help can be something very wise. Our interventional radiologist was uh, extremely nice. Uh, he came in immediately, brought a large array of coils, and we were able to find the coil that successfully sealed uh, the right coronary artery perforation. Thank you.